Howdy folks, Rudros here, and I wanted to bring you an update to the green-purple list that I kind of ran last set in set 5. This is an update for set 6. Uh, this version, you know, there are some versions out there that are kind of more mid-rangey. This one is meant to be definitely more aggressive, and we use a lot of instant lore, so it kind of has that, uh, what people call a burn factor, where you're just instant lore, instant lore, instant lore, and we got a few pieces to upgrade it. I, in general, this is still pretty budget-friendly, although I have added some kind of expensive cards. We can swap those out if you want to keep it a little cheaper. Anyway, if you haven't already, don't forget to like and subscribe. The video really helps out with the algorithm and boosting the channel forward. I appreciate you watching. So let's get into it. One of our big changes is this new purple Diablo. You'll see in a few matches here that I have the green Diablo in there as well. You know, ideally what you would want is <laughs> you would want a single green Diablo so you can put out turn one, scout their hand, and then after that, the other three are just purple Diablos. Chances of you actually getting that, eh, probably not great, but it's just a nice card that replaces itself. Ideally, you still really do want to see Merfolk turn one. We still want to put on that early lore pressure. That's a big part of the deck, which is why you want to follow up with like a Bonsai or a Flynn on turn two. Fred is not going to help you in the Steel matchups, but Steel has always been the bane of this deck's existence, so I'm kind of okay with that. In testing, he's been fine. If they have to challenge him early, you're going to get an extra two lore off of it, which is what you want from a one drop. And if they have to burn removal, you know, if imagine having to use a brawl on a Fred, like you're okay with that. You're okay with them using a brawl. Again, if they have a Cinderella and they can just sing Storm Rage on, that's not good, but that, that deck has always beaten you up. A few changes too. I cut back on the numbers on some of these cards we're only running two snake and two ursula deceiver now we had four apiece in the last one and i just realized that isn't really what you want to be doing when you're going aggressive your ideal opening is either like merfolk into two more merfolk or merfolk into bonsai you don't really want to bounce your merfolk on turn two with the fox and then because then you've just slowed down your lore gain, now you have to put it out on the next turn. So, but Fox, or sorry, Snake still is useful for bouncing some of our repeatable effects like Merlin and White Rose, which we'll get to. Fox is, of course, just better because it has the rush factor. And Flynn, we're keeping. You could take out another Flynn to go to Bonsai. This version is a lot more heavy on the uninkables because we are running the big legendary Diablo. So if you're worried about that, maybe keep the numbers like this. If you're not worried about the uninkables, go ahead, throw in a fourth Bonsai. I do think he's overall better than Flynn. Go, go, Tomogo. This is just another way of us for us to get instant lore. You pretty much can't use it on turn two. You're going to have to play it on four or higher. But even, even I was thinking about this. I was like, how much lore does this card need to get to be worth it? But my friend made a good point. As long as it gets two, that's worth it, right? Because we play goat. And if you play a goat and the goat instantly gets banished, it gets you two lore. That's great. We, we play the goat just for that very reason. Yes, it can be bounced as well, but at minimum, it always says gain two lore. So I think as long as you're gaining two lore with Gogo, -Go, you're pretty happy with it. You can even put it down early for its evasive if you need to counter like an early Diablo, but I just like the idea that you can come down later and cheese lore out of the game. Speaking of that, we have a great new addition here in the White Rose. You just play it on entry, get a lore. So it's one cheaper than a goat. It's kind of a poor person's goat in the sense that it doesn't get you two lore, but you're okay with that. And the 3-3 three, three stat line is huge. It doesn't die to Brawl. It doesn't die to Big Sisu. They have to have ice blocks for that. It will survive now a Storm Rage on, some of the steel removal, and it lets us sing all the songs we have in our deck, other than you're welcome, but we can sing bosses on a roll, friends on the other side with this three cost body. So I have really been happy with the White Rose and testing. It's just another way to cheese lore. We have so much instant lore gain in this deck that <laughs> if we never quested, I think you can get like 24 lore without ever even questing. Not that that'll come up, but so I am on the big Diablo right now. I did originally try this card way back when I first made green purple, but I didn't have the shift line. I wasn't going in on the green Diablo bird. And I think without the shift, it is significantly weaker because turn three, you essentially just play it and it sits there. And then if it gets banished, then you got no value off of it. But if you can shift it immediately, I mean, you should know how strong that is. And we have four actions plus 10 songs, 14 cards to shift it. So, you know, that if you're not seeing the Merfolk line, turn one Diablo, turn two shift, also followed up with a Bonsai. That's so strong. And now any other threats you're putting down, they have to deal with the Diablo first. So been very happy with this card. The previous version, we used Amethyst Chromicon to keep drawing cards. And sometimes that would just bite us in the butt because it gave our opponents way too many cards. But Diablo just draws for yourself. Goat, everybody knows. Goofy, I've been really happy with. I had some other cards in the five drop slot. I tried the Elsa. I tried Bell. I tried Megara. Just kind of all these cards that like, oh, we'll top deck them. We had Pegasus there for a minute with the small shift line. 
I think Goofy's probably the best one we're going to get. It has ward itself, so they can't target for anything. And then it can give another character ward. And you're going to see that in one of these matches. I'm going to show you how relevant that is. And then it quests for three. That's a really big threat to put on the board. So I've been very pleased with how Goofy is performing for our top end. And Goofy is our only five cost card. Everything else is four or lower. Of course, for gathering knowledge and wisdom, instant lore, friends to help us draw, boss on a roll, sets up what we want to do on our next turn. Plus, it's one more lore which is great. You're welcome. I often go back and forth on this card. There are times I think, eh, maybe you just want to play solitaire and you don't want to use your welcome to stop it. You just, but sometimes if it's not going your way, it has come in handy. Like there was a match where uh, there was a queen's castle on the other side, didn't have a way to challenge it and said, and they had a bunch of characters there. It's like, you know, if they start drawing three cards a turn, getting extra lore, they might be able to overtake me. So let's just, you're welcome. Get the castle out of here. So I'm still overall pretty happy with it in the list. We've added one more library. Library is really good on turn four, especially where you can put it down and move someone there. It's a great place to move Diablo because they're going to want to get rid of your Diablo. The White Rose there as well. And then Queen's Castle, of course, is just a very strong location. So we're still going pretty fast, trying to just kind of blitz our opponents. And then as they start to stabilize, we just cheese it out with all our instant lore gain. So let me show you a fun best of three series against Blurple. All right, here we've got a fun match against Blurple. Looks like our opponent is getting down an early broom. We have the Diablo. We can scout their hand. This is back when I was running the green version. I really don't think there's a bad call between the green and the purple version. Like I said, ideally, this is what you want. You actually want the green one on turn one, and then you want the rest of them to be purple. So they'll draw you cards. So you could do that 3-1 split and just hope you always hit the green one. As our opponent is going to sail, we do have the shift line in hand. Uh, we also have a snake, which is not really what we want to be doing. So we might, I could also play the gathering knowledge and wisdom, but we can also immediately sing bosses on a roll, which is pretty nice. So we shift the Diablo, I actually give up the bosses on a roll. I want to just take out this broom while I've got the chance. Knowing this is Blurple, you know, they're not going to have any instant spot removal. I go ahead and draw off the Diablo. So I feel good challenging that. Plus this way they can't draw off the broom draw. And they actually get a genie out on turn three, the the power of ramp, right? And this genie is is now a new threat to us. Oh, so suddenly my Diablo isn't super safe. I imagine I'm probably going to go in on the white rose here. Yep. So now I'll get another instant lore. Go ahead and quest with Diablo. Yes, his days are numbered, but it also means my opponent isn't questing. I drew the library off of that. Had I known... Had I like already had the library in hand, I might have actually waited one more turn to put Diablo at the library, but since I didn't have it at the time, I did it. Nonetheless, at least the genie doesn't get to quest. And Diablo got us two cards. I'm happy with that. And now if he wants to challenge into this white rose, it's going to really hurt him. So I can go in on either the library next turn. Oof, another genie. That's a lot of, that's a lot of lore. You will see, so one of the reasons I, I, I like this best of three is it does show we do have a bit of a weakness to evasives. Diablo is our only real evasive answer. So if you wanted to put something like five drop Elsa in, if you felt like you were kind of struggling with evasives, that's something you could do. I did have the Tinkerbell in here originally, although... I mean, yeah, it's evasive itself, but it has very low stats. So I feel like if you do that, you'll have to throw Crab back in as well, which Crab was in my list last set, but I just, the amount of times it came up was not huge. So I ultimately decided, yeah, I don't want to do that. So now here's kind of the nice thing about the library. Like your opponent wants to start hitting the library before they hit anything else. We have more instant lore. Unfortunately, this entire board is evasive, so I can't attack any of it, but I can just keep questing put the goat at the library as well. So now my opponent essentially has to answer my location before they can answer anything else. Otherwise, I'm just going to start drawing cards off of it. And you can tell they're trying to math that out right now. I don't have a ton of card draw in hand. That's what the library is for. So they do send all four into the, or sorry, all three into the library and hit a Hades. Oof. That's unfortunate. And actually, they could have done that before the library since it doesn't banish the card. So I'll get the exit from the goat. So here's an instance where, yeah, you wish that was a purple... Diablo so that you could at least put it out draw a card from it send the goat out go to 10 again I can't attack anything on this board because I don't have a way to deal with evasives fox bounce the goat go to 12 all right well at least you know we're, we're just kind of pushing our own lore I'm just going to try to go faster unfortunately our opponent has a lot of big questers on the board they send out another Hades to get rid of the fox oh my goodness 
I mean, I, I appreciate the ink, but losing my board is uh, not enjoyable. Our opponent just decides to go fast. They do run into the rows with that. So now they have a huge board. They actually have lethal if they have the shift Elsa. So I go three for friends. I actually get the Goofy, which sets up my own lethal. So I have the Goofy. As long as they don't have the shift Elsa, Goofy quest for three, double gathering knowledge and wisdom, go to 19, go to 18. But, of course, they did have the big Elsa. Luckily, they can't target the Goofy, but it doesn't matter because they could just quest for victory. At this turn, it just shows you how fast Blurple can be as well, and shows you, hey, if, if there are a lot of evasives in your area, you might need to tech in a few things to deal with those. And I just show, yeah, because I told him, I was like, oh man, I could have won on my next turn. He's like, eight lore, how? And I go <laughs> like this, four here, three here, one here, don't mind if I do. Game two of our best of three. Here, I don't have any of the Diablo lines, so I go ahead and ink the small Diablo to put out the Merfolk. We're going to put on that early pressure. It, it's useful, too, now that I know I'm playing against Blurple, I don't really need to keep any of the removal aspects or be worried about spot removal, right? Their biggest spot removal is going to be Hades and let it go. So Chernobyl, which is a pretty decent counter to that. I go ahead and throw out, probably I would imagine, the Bonsai here. Again, so here's an instance. You could protect the Merfolk with the Snake, but then you're just slowing down your lore pressure. And, and I'm usually okay if someone wants to attack with a merfolk. Or wants to attack a merfolk because they have to discard a card anyway. And he exposes his Chernabog here. And if he isn't questing with his Chernabog, then that means he's not getting the card draw off of it. So, <clears throat> excuse me. Granted, it would be, feel a little bad to run Bonsai into it, but keeps off the card draw. I also have the Snake, which I can do. Which our opponent says, yep, I'll have to discard a card goes in so now i can punish them here's where i was running that tinkerbell which i just go ahead and ink meh <laughs> tinkerbell more like inkerbell pull back the bonsai send the fox in there i've just cut off his card draw and i'm ahead on four lore there goes a rabbit nice card draw Ooh, diablo that's a fun one I actually just sing the bosses on a roll, which is very awkward to deal to do on tabletop simulator. There's no like hotkey or shortcuts where you can just go, oh, you know, put these on top, put these on bottom as it lets you manipulate your deck as you see fit. So you have to kind of very awkwardly be like, okay, I want to put these on top. That's the easier part. And then you have to pick the deck up and put the others on the bottom. Because I think if you click either of those buttons on the right, let's say like topmost left bottommost right whatever it does all five when actually with boss and all is on a roll you're allowed to split them up so stack it in a way that i prefer get my cards back go ahead and jam out the diablo and i go ahead and ink the snake i could have kept the snake to start doing goat bouncing shenanigans but I want to establish the Diablo and get more card draw. Their biggest punish for this is an Elsa, but you got to make them have it, right? Sometimes they're just not going to have it. And as we can see right there, well, they didn't have it. So he couldn't instant Elsa punish the Diablo. Can bounce the Fox. And I mean, he can trade, but I'm okay with that. His board is empty while I've got the bird on the bird on the field. Diablo is just going to draw a lot of cards with the friends. <laughs> I can put out a second Diablo. I can put out, which is what we're going to go for. And we'll ink the You're Welcome, and I'll put out the Bonsai and just keep pushing these lore threats. Okay, well, you can Elsa one of these. You can Elsa both of them. He does have the Elsa. He goes ahead and takes out the new one. And come back to me. We've got Library now, too, which is fantastic. So Library, and I can move both cards into the Library. Say, so go ahead. Yeah, you can Elsa this again. I'm going to draw another card off of it. I hold on to the Flynn just for a few extra bodies. Gosh, Diablo is such a strong card. So yeah, now, okay, well, the Elsa isn't strong enough to take out the library, so they have to take out the Diablo, but that means I just draw off of it for the library as well. I really do like the library in combination with this. There's Hades. He can get rid of the Bonsai. It is not banished, uh, importantly, even though he was at the library. He is not banished. He's just put into the inkwell. So now you do not get to draw a card off of that. So I go ahead and put out Goofy. And I can use two ink here. Yep, move one, move Goofy to the library. And I think I was considering putting out Merfolk, yeah. I, I, Because technically, Merfolk next turn, I could quest with the Goofy, make it warded if need be. Yeah, but our opponent's probably not going to allow it. But that's okay, because we'll get to show you the power of Goofy here coming up in a moment. As we're making our opponent answer every single thing we do. Library, of course, not as fast lore-wise as the Queen's Castle, but sometimes that one extra health does make a big difference. Our opponent's starting to go wide now as well. They're going to send five into the library. 
but we're about to have a good time now, right? So check this out. So we put out the goat. Quest with the Goofy. I give the ward to the goat. So I learned from last game where he just used the Hades to tuck the goat back into the inkwell. Well, now this goat has ward. It says, actually, you're not allowed to touch this. Use bosses on a roll. Not only do we go up one more lore, <laughs> I get to stack my deck. So I just look for any instant lore. Oh, there's a bunch of goats. Yeah, I don't mind those. We'll just keep those right on top. I also have a gathering knowledge and wisdom in hand. So as you can see, this one's pretty darn over, which is going to lead to a nice, fun endgame state. So our opponent, I, I get, you can't answer this goat because it has ward. Uh, you can attack into the Goofy. You also need to attack into the library. Yeah, there's a lot of things you got to do all at once. And you can tell opponents just sitting there thinking, oh, what do we do? So I, I've really enjoyed this version. I've seen some of the mid-range versions of Green Emerald, or sorry, uh, Emerald Amethyst. And those seem strong too. Like, I do like cards like the Big Ursula. If you're playing a lot of lower ones, you can shift onto that, the Clarabelle. I think that version of the list is fun too, but I kind of just really enjoy this aggressive just answer what i do version sometimes it'll fall behind and then it does struggle to come back but and goofy with a big four body and him not having any huge attackers means he has to send two characters into it there okay so he has the hades so he could have tucked the goat away and then used the elsa to finish off the merfolk but he couldn't target the goat because of the ward so that will end up being huge here i mean we were going to probably win nonetheless but that was a big point and i just show yeah i have all this instant lore in hand so we, uh, this one's ours. There's our final best of three. I have a Merfolk Bonsai, which is okay. That's pretty much what I decide to go in. I do get a big Diablo. Again, not nearly as threatening without the small shift line. Our opponent will get to go first in this match. As they do put out an early broom. And I get Fred. And here's an instance where it's know your matchup, right? One, I kind of just wanted to try it out to see what it was like. But two, I say, okay, I'll put Fred out over the Merfolk. You know, let's see what he does. You know, let's see. Because, again, this Blurple doesn't really have ways of instant removal until it gets to, what, the 5 and 7 ink range? If he wants to spend a let it go on a Fred, I think I'm okay with that. So there is Diablo. <laughs> One turn too late. I, I could technically play it and shift this turn, but I just don't think that's very worth it. I could go Diablo Merfolk, which is what I decided to do. So now I can shift it for the next turn. And we quest with Fred. And, yeah, if our opponent challenges this Fred, which they probably should because they should get it off the board... I'm just going to go up to three lore. Ah, I'm very pleased with that for a one drop. So I think Fred's viability will just determine what kind of decks you're seeing. If you're in a heavy steel meta and they can just knock it out with a Storm Rage on constantly before you see it, you can take them out of the deck. You could put the Evasive Pegasus back in, which it's going to kind of accomplish the same thing. So, But I've enjoyed him so far. I have liked him, so it looks like they are going to take a... Or no, they got a quest, yeah. Bite the Fred. I go up to three lore off of that. Hey, don't mind if I do. Don't mind if I do at all. So we have a couple options here. I could technically just hard play the Diablo, although that's not amazing. So I immediately sing friends, get another two. I can actually do a bosses on a roll here. I could even go... The library, I don't like as much with a fox sitting on the board. If your opponent has fox into fox, they can take the library out in one turn. So I don't love that. Yeah, so I'd be surprised if I went in on the library. So we just play the bonsai. Technically tapped one extra ink, but no big deal there. And now, yeah, feel free to chew on this merfolk. I'll take another card from your hand while my Diablo is refilling my hand. I'm okay with that. Yeah, opponent has to do that, of course, because you can't just let a merfolk sit around. There's their own goat trying to establish threats on the board. I'm going to sing the bosses on a roll. I really do enjoy this card. What are you looking for in the bosses on a roll? So usually you're just looking for aggressive tools. If you're dying for card draw, you could keep something like friends on the other side, uh, which is what it looks like I am going to put on top because that means I can draw it with the Diablo and sing it. Um, if you're, you know, usually you're just looking for stuff that'll help you close out the game, gathering knowledge and wisdom, goat, all those instant lore pieces. But hey, let's say I saw that you're welcome there. Let's say there's something on this field I absolutely have to answer. Now's the time for your welcome. So the Diablo draws into the friends, which if they don't get rid of, even if they get rid of the Diablo, the white flower can sing it next turn or the white rose, which is very nice. And they can't, still can't challenge the Diablo. And the Bonsai is such a nice card. He trades with either of these purple cards. So there you see they did have, or at least they eventually got the foxes. So a fox and a hyena take each other out in a battle of supremacy. Here, you could, you could argue you could just cast friends on the other side. 
because you don't have anything you absolutely have to do with your ink, but in case you draw into something fun, and here's an example of when I was running the Tinkerbell, oh, yeah, let's draw into that. So now I'm threatening one, two, three, four, five, six lore, plus two evasives. Uh, our opponent's kind of in a world of hurt here, and they are not to that point yet where they can bring down something like Hades. They do discard for the Merfolk trigger. And look at that. I have three gathering knowledge and wisdom. Doot, doot, doot. Don't mind if I do. Go to 19. <laughs> and just, yeah. Look, look what we have in hand. I just show them. Yep. I have three sources of instant lores. That's a deck list. I've had a really great time with it. Let me know what improvements you found for green, purple, this set that you really like. I tried the Honey Lemon too. She actually worked pretty well. I think Gogo -Go ultimately does more what you want trying to get instant lore in the deck. But I think there's a lot of choices for Emerald and Amethyst this set. But this is the version I've just personally really enjoyed. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Don't forget to like and subscribe and look out for more Lorcana content. I appreciate you so much for watching. And until next time, take care. Also, don't forget to check me out on the Cross Continentals Championship matches if you haven't been watching. I got to cast three of those this week, hoping to do more in the future. So, bye.